There have been a couple of faked attempts to show the shadow on Earth created by a solar eclipse. First was by EPIC on Deep Space Climate Observatory, a satellite apparently launched by SpaceX and in a heliocentric orbit one million miles from Earth. Let's look at this image a little closer. It looks exactly like the image textures NASA provides on their site. The shadow is conveniently over in the middle of nowhere, and why don't they show the stars? They say it's because the camera exposure is set for the brighter Earth, but it would be simple for them to take two pictures, one of the Earth, and then change the exposure and take another picture with exposure settings appropriate for starlight. They are definitely familiar with compositing, so that should be easy and would provide the first ever picture of a planet with the stars in the background. Here is a 2006 total solar eclipse over Turkey and Cyprus. NASA claims this was taken from the ISS about 240 miles above the surface. Looks to me like around 80,000 feet with a model overlay. There are some planes that can fly at these altitudes. For example, NASA and the Air Force are the only two users of the SR-71, a plane with an altitude record of 85,000 feet. Now why would NASA need one of those? Here is what it would look like from 29,000 miles with an 80 millimeter lens. The yellow line connects the sun to the position on Earth where the sun would be seen directly overhead. The gray line connects the moon to the position on Earth in the same way. Notice how the sun is catching up to the moon's position and eventually overtaking it. After releasing this first clip, I got a few comments about the Earth not appearing to be spinning. This is because the camera is connected to the Earth, so it is spinning with it like holding a selfie stick and turning around. The only visual indication that shows the Earth is spinning is the background stars. From a ground perspective, the Sun takes 24 hours to go around the Earth because of the Earth's counterclockwise spin when viewed from the top. The Moon appears to take on average 50 minutes longer than the Sun to make that same revolution around the Earth. This is why the sun is always catching up and then passing the moon on a new moon and solar eclipses. This can easily be verified by viewing the moon two consecutive nights and noting the time difference. To show the earth spin, I've attached a camera to an imaginary line between the earth and sun. Shadow starts to appear over the west coast of America and moves to the east. I will slow this clip down and play it again and also zoom in on the earth so you can see the shadow better.
Next is three ground views along with a view from space. All locations are on the line of totality or very near to it. Top right, Salem, Oregon. Bottom left, Princeton, Kentucky. And bottom right, Tiga Cay, South Carolina. To show the Earth's spin, here is what it looks like with the camera fixed in space. The Earth appears to move away from the camera quickly at first, but that is just the effect of distance. The further away an object is, the slower it appears to move. The solar eclipse works in a very similar way on a flat stationary Earth. If you take the Sun's known apparent angular diameter and calculate its distance with a 40 mile diameter Sun, it will bring it close enough to create a solar eclipse when the Moon's distance is also adjusted by the same method. The main difference to the globe model is the presence of a larger penumbra area on the flat model. This could be due to the close Sun and Moon. Next is a view from a stationary camera 12,000 miles above the surface. The path of totality is a little south compared to the globe model. Changing the sun's assumed size from 40 to a 39 mile diameter would lower its altitude enough for the shadow to follow a more northerly path. Next is a view with the camera connected to the sun's motion and then panning around it. The moon and the sun are both very flat spheres. The moon is not very easy to see being flat but it is visible passing just below the sun. Search my channel for moon shape to see how a flat disk looks through a refractive substance.
and here is a ground view from near the path of totality.